Good morning. Today is Monday, July 11th, 2022. At my bar mitzvah, I and all the other men wore a bright red velvet yarmulke, which matched the bright red bencher cover and the bright red matchbooks because that's how you did a bar mitzvah in Memphis in 1971. I don't remember as a child knowing or hearing the word kippah, which is a Hebrew word that literally means dome. It describes the shape of this object we wear on our head. The word that we used and is still used is yamaka, which is a shortened form of the two words yare malka, which means a respect or a reverence for God, which is describes the purpose or the meaning of this object to have a constant reminder that there is one above us, that we are not the highest creatures in this world. In my teens, I wore a black velvet yarmulke because that's what everybody wore where I was but they were not all identical. There were subtle differences, but the differences are very important. And the differences identified you with a certain group of Jews or a certain Jewish outlook. So one issue is whether a velvet yarmulke has four panels or six panels. Just so you know, If it has six panels, it is better able to lay flat. If there are only four panels, it has a habit of kind of sticking up in the air. Uh, Another difference is whether there is a button on the top of the yarmulke. Uh, And the answer is no, there should not be, but sometimes there is. And the other main issue is whether there is trim around the edge. There are also differences in how large they are, how tall they stand, but it's been this way for a long time that in addition to the reasons we wear something on our head, they are also a way of identifying us, signaling to others who I am, what I believe, how I am supposed to act. Now, obviously, This relies a lot on stereotypes, but stereotypes sometimes are right. Sometime in my late 20s, I started wearing a black knitted kippah, like this. I happen to be wearing one now, but like this, a black knitted kippah. The the Hebrew term is kippah sruga. The word sruga is a Hebrew word that means knitted, a knitted kippah, kippah sruga. It wasn't for any ideological reason. It's the same color, black, but it has a slimmer profile than uh, velvet. It's more of a minimalist look. In general, I have kind of a minimalist aesthetic and it just appealed to me a little bit more. Now, I guess, from the point of view of a velvet yarmulke, this was the beginning of a slippery slope down the mountain. So a few years later, I started wearing a black knit kippah, kippah struga, but with a thin border of color around. So I now have a number of these in different colors. This one is blue. This one is purple. So, you know, it could be uh, color. It's still mostly black, but it could be color coordinated to what I was wearing. And then a few years ago, um, I started taking the ultimate plunge and I started buying kippahs of different colors. So I have uh, a range of blue, I have uh, brown and tan, uh, lots of blue, (laughs) 
many blue kippahs of different of different shades. And um, I am particular about where I buy a kippah. There is only one place that I like to go, and that is a place in Jerusalem, in Yerushalayim, on Ben Yehuda. It is a tiny store the size of a closet. It's called Kipa Man, and that's the place that I like to go for Kipa. I find the quality and the colors to be my uh, preference after a lifetime of shopping in different places. And whenever I am in Israel, I have to visit Kipa Man to um, stack up on my supply or to add to my collection. But where did this whole idea of a kippah sruga, a knitted kippah, where did it come from? And how did it come to be so loaded in terms of the ideological statement that it makes? So I confess I never knew until last week when I read an article by Chagai Huberman. And it started from a young Israeli girl named Penina in the late 1940s. She was active in B'nai Akiva. B'nai Akiva is the youth movement of the Dati Lumi, the religious Zionist world. So Dati Lumi, the religious Zionist world, as distinct from the Haredi world, the um, insular Orthodox uh, world. Those are two large camps. Of course, there's overlap and there's uh, gradations within them, but those are like the two large labels of religious Jews in, in Israel. Uh, there are more, but those are two. And um, so B'nai Akiva, which is still around and, and very active, for example, here in Montreal, wonderful uh, youth group. So this girl, Panina, was active in B'nai Akiva, in the late 1940s in Israel, in Tel Aviv. She was from Tel Aviv. And she and some of the other girls used to gather and knit. They would knit different things. And Penina, one time, knitted a kippah for her boyfriend, whose name is Ovadia, Ovadia Chen Sion. He is also from Tel Aviv. Ovadia liked the kippah that Penina made for him, and he wore it. Ovadia's rabbi was Rabbi Moshe Tzvi Neria, one of the leading figures in the Dati Leumi world, the religious Zionist world, and in the world of Hezder Yeshiva, the system of Torah study combined with military service that is a part of that section of the Israeli society. And he asked Penina, his student's girlfriend, to make a kippah for him because he liked the one that uh, Vadia was wearing. And soon, once Rabbi Neria started wearing it, everyone in this community started to wear it. Different colors, different patterns. Um, I have one, I, I, and I don't even know where this comes from. It was just, it's in my closet. Um, this I don't wear. I, I you know, I draw the line somewhere, but it's very nice. I'm sure people would, many people would like it, but it's just, it's not my, uh, it's just not my uh, style. Um, uh, and by the way, I just want to be clear on Shabbos, I only wear black because I too have limits and standards. So, you know, the, the colors are for only for uh, weekdays. But in any event, once Rabbi Neria started wearing this kind of a kippah and his students and followers started to wear it and it became very, very popular till this day and it came to identify a person as part of that movement, that segment of Israeli society that we refer to as Dati Lumi, religious Zionist. Uh, it roughly corresponds to what we would identify in North America as modern orthodoxy. Not exactly, but roughly. And again, that kippah identifies a person as part of that, the Dati Umi world, the religious Zionist world, in distinction from the Haredi world, which is still wearing black velvet yarmulkes. Penina and Ovadia married in 1950, and they recently celebrated their 71st wedding anniversary with their children 
and many, many grandchildren, and I assume lots of knitted kipot. So now you know a little bit about what to look for in someone wearing something on their head. And I just want to say thank you, Panina and Ovadia Chain Zion, for your contribution to Jewish life and to Jewish fashion. Thank you very much. My friends, I want to wish you a great day. I look forward to seeing you soon in person.